So what's the real big push behind fabric extension? Why would we want to stick fabric extenders into our data center? Well, that's a good question. And fortunately for you, we'll go over it in this particular clip. So let's rewind for a moment. Let's think about the data center before certain times such as virtualization and the mass push for consolidation. And typically you'd have your three tier model, the core, formerly distribution, now aggregation layer, and the access layer. And typically we want to push as much complexity northbound as possible. We want to have the core switch is usually something big and beefy, has a lot of intelligence behind it, probably pretty expensive. And then as you go down to the access layer, you get the cheaper switches where you're just trying to push port density. Now enter the realm of virtualization, which typically gets blamed, so you can sort of blame virtualization, and you start to see this furthering of network complexity. Here I have an example of a blade enclosure provided by HP, and you'll notice that those top of rack or end of row switches shown on the top that are Nexus 5548s are connecting downstream to a chassis. Now when we formally just use things like rack mount servers, or perhaps the blade servers were only hosting things like physical implementations of an operating system, this wasn't so bad. But when we start using things like virtual machines and hypervisors on those virtual machines, there's more and more complexity involved because now we have virtual switches. And in the case of the example that I'm showing you here, we're actually stuffing more access layer switches into a chassis. So in the example here, we've got eight different switches on the back of this blade enclosure. Four of them are most likely for land traffic and another four for sand traffic. And it just further adds to the network complexity. Now we have all these other switches that connect to further switches, that connect to virtual switches, and so on and so forth. But still, there's a desire to keep the complexity upstream. That's where we're doing our management, our configuration, and really where our operational efforts are being focused. And just add port quantity downstream. Think about a network interface card or NIC. It's a pretty stupid device, right? It just kind of accepts packets in, pushes packets out. You don't really do much to it. And that's the way we like it. We don't want to have to manage network adapters. That would be crazy. So we want those high quantity network ports being the network ports on your server or the edge ports on something like an access switch to be cheap and deep. You want a lot of them, you want to be fast, but you don't want to really have to manage it. But don't worry, I was not the first one to notice this. And quite frankly, I was looking at white papers from around, I don't know, 2008, 2009, that time frame, where people were saying, this is a huge headache. And as someone who had to manage systems like this, I firmly agreed with them. So the concept was born around the use of interface virtualizers, which sounds really weird. There's no way you could sell something like that. It doesn't sound cool and unfortunately has the acronym of IV, and that's just not sexy at all. So that became today's FEX, Fabric Extension or Fabric Extender. And the idea is we're going to use kind of an intermediary switch that is kind of lobotomized. It doesn't do local switching, but it provides the port density that we're looking for. So if you think about it, we're providing a quantity of downstream ports. We can check that box for the desire of port quantity. And it also pushes the complexity upstream because we're not really managing these interface virtualizers or fexes. They're kind of like remote line cards. So that brings me to the idea of local switching. And typically this is the one little kernel of information that people accidentally breeze past when they think about fabric extension. It's the idea that a fabric extender does not do local switching ever. It doesn't have the capability to do local switching. It's kind of like a zombie switch. It relies on its parent switch to do all of the switching. So don't ever think that traffic entering a FEX is going to be switched locally. It's going to have to pass upstream to its parent switch. The parent switch then decides where the traffic needs to go, and it may come back down the very same link that came up to the FEX to another server that's connected on the FEX. That just may happen. There are two primary topologies that we're going to focus on at this level of the CCNA data center, and that's remote FEX with a Nexus switch and another one with UCS. So let's talk about the remote FEX with a Nexus switch first. So I have an example here where someone has provided a pair of 7700 Nexus switches, and they are completely full. You can see all of the line card slots on these particular switches are full, and we can't add any more. So that may be a driver to add a FEX. And in this case, we would provide effects. This is a 2232 model, meaning it's a 2200 series switch with 32 host-facing ports. 
Now, I'm not saying that the only reason to use effects is when you run out of line card space on a parent switch. That could be one reason. It could be that you've bought one line card for your parent switch that's expensive, and you're thinking, geez, I don't need any more of these really expensive, powerful line cards. I just need more ports. So you would slap effects onto these switches by cabling it to both the switches if you want. You can cable it to just one or the other. Either way, you want to make sure that if you cable the effects to just one switch, you'd want to have two effects so that you have two paths back to your core or aggregation switches, whatever it may be. Here we provided a way that we've granted more ports to these Nexus 7K switches without installing line cards. But logically, it's as if we have a remote line card that's just connected using cabling back to the parent switch. Then when we need to provide access to whatever our hosts are, they could be blades, they could be servers, there's some, there's some caveats here, but whatever it needs to consume the throughput on the switch can just connect into those host-facing ports. And we get a lot more bandwidth. You can see here we've got four upstream connections, and we have 32 downstream connections that are connected, technically 16 in this particular graphic. So we're over-committing by a factor of four, and that's okay. We may not need nearly as much bandwidth as provided with a one-to-one -one, non-blocking relationship. It may be perfect fine to overcommit because if you think about it your cable company does and just about any internet service provider does it's a pretty natural thing in the data center and as long as you know what you're doing perfectly fine the other topology that we will go much deeper into in the UCS module is the idea of using effects within a blade enclosure. In this case, it's Cisco UCS in a 5108 chassis, and we're using what they call I.O. modules. So in UCS world, the effects gets a slightly different name. It's an I.O. module, but it's doing kind of the same thing, just a different form factor of the equipment. So I'll highlight there's actually two I.O. modules in every chassis, and they're kind of denoted the A side or the 1 side, and then the B side or the 2 side. So if you were to look at the FEX inside of a chassis, they're usually called FEX 1 slash 1 and 2 slash 2, or FEX A and FEX B. Well, rather than just stuffing a chassis with all those switches that you saw earlier, the concept here is to keep the chassis switch, in this case it's effects or I.O. module, very limited in what it can do. We just want to provide bandwidth to the blades, so we don't want to manage the switches as individual switches. We just want to provide throughput and a way to get back into the network. With an I.O. module, there's four ports on the back of these because these are 2204 series switches. You could also use 2208 series switches, which, hey, guess what, has eight ports. So the last number is the number of ports that we're presenting upstream. You can cable one, two, four, or eight ports at a time. And in this case, let's cable two of them to the upstream fabric interconnects. We're only consuming two ports on the I.O. module and two ports on the fabric interconnect. However, we can provide networking for eight different blades. So in this case, it's a four to one overcommit, and it's perfectly fine. If we need more bandwidth later, we can just cable the rest of the ports up or swap to a 2208 model and cable eight ports up and give everything a one-to-one -one relationship. But chances are you don't need that much cabling running between your top-of-rack UCS system and the chassis that are connected to the blades.